Hi there, my name is Will and I'm a developer advocate at Kestra. Today I'm going to be walking you through the new push namespace, files, task, and how you can use that inside of Kestra to keep everything in sync with Git. In case you haven't already, watch the push flows video first, as that will cover how you can set up a Git repository and set up a personal access token with Kestra in order to be able to push our changes. Jumping into Kestra, I've got an example file here called example.py that is inside of the dev namespace. By using the push namespace files task, I can push this to my Git repository on its own. In this system flow that I have here, I'm using the push namespace files task and very similar to the push flows task, it's asking me for my username and password, the URL I'm going to use for pushing my files, the branch of my repository that I want these to end up on, as well as the namespace that the files are in. And I can again specify individual files. So in this case, I only want to push example.py and it will put it inside of a folder in that repository called underscore files. And of course I can add a commit message too so I can go back and understand why things were added. When I execute this with dry run enabled, we can see that it was going to add our one file that's got one line of code in it successfully to the files folder. So let's turn off dry run and get that committed to our repository. As we can see from this execution, it has successfully committed and pushed our file from Kestra to GitHub. So if we head over to our Git repository now, we'll be able to see that when I refresh the page that we will have a files folder now and inside of there will be our example.py. Let's try this with a number of files and see what happens. So as you can see here, I've now got three files. I've got example.sh and example.js, both of them just printing out a simple hello world. If I now jump back to our system flow, we should be able to commit all of these. So now all I need to do is I can remove that files property and instead when there is not this, and when files isn't defined, it will commit everything in that namespace. And as we can see, when I commit this, we'll be able to see that it has committed successfully those extra two files as well. Let's head over to GitHub and have a look. And if I refresh and press files, we can now see all three of the files are now in GitHub. Hopefully you found that useful. In the next video, we're gonna be showing you how you can sync your namespace files so you can make sure that your Git repository and Kestra are always in sync with each other. If you do have any feedback or comments, let us know down in the comment section or you can join our Slack community.